Hi, I'm Seamless, and this is the 726th uh, 75k tutorial. This one was requested by a Chaotic Peanut. Did I already do one by him? I don't know. But this was an Emperor and Mephius sound, and it sounds like this. That's the original sound. And this is my sound. I didn't really go in and nail it, but I got the important parts. And we'll talk about how they work. So, uh, first let's start off by looking at the analysis of the original. So we can see a very obvious split between two particular sections. We have what's going on in the low end, and then we have what's going on in the high end. My initial thought when I first saw this was that it sounded an awful lot like it was like a sample that they made that was getting pitched down. But then upon further inspection, I noticed that the harmonics are changing for every hit when they're going down. And so it sort of sounds like there's a filter shape that's remaining static, but then the harmonics beneath them are moving as if it were actually a synth that's being controlled, which is not, you know, far-fetched, but it's because that, that first hit with that with those weird harmonics that kind of sit in the 800 hertz range makes it feel like there's, it's like part of a, I mean, for all I know, maybe it is part of a sample that also has it being filtered. Point being, two distinct sections, a synth, and some filters. Now, what I've done here is that the one automation is just a pitch. So there's just pitch automation. And I use that to try my best to try and replicate it. So the, the two sections are split up. We have um, the high pass area and then the low pass area, which is representing the sub. And I, I kind of EQ'd it to make it match the EQ performance of the original. And this is all happening inside, outside of his interest. It's actually a majority of this is happening inside of his interest. There is some external processing, but it's very minute. Um, the first operator is just the sub, and I, I kind of just am making. I put the, these high, these extra um, frequencies in here. And here's here's the thing about the sub though is that um, if you look at the uh, the waveform um, while it's playing, you can you can kind of see that it's not necessarily square wave sub. You can see that. Um, there's kind of like a squeezy point and then a larger point. That's kind of how it's doing its deal. And that's an awful lot. At least it looks an awful lot. I use, yeah, an awful lot. Like if I do this as opposed to this, either will create distorted harmonics, but that's sort of what happens when you distort it, but it's just a source of two different kinds of distortion. Um, however, I decided to do the kind with um, the control here. You can see how even, even by messing with the phase that it kind of starts to make it look like that. It's just a different kind of sub-saturation where you saturate a sine wave and you get extra square wave harmonics, hence adding harmonics in the square wave range. I could have just made these louder instead of uh, pumping it up here. However, I am inputting, I'm inputting this low frequency along with the thing that is the high frequency noise in the same distortion together. So without the, without the sub and with just the high frequency material, this is what this sounds like. And I apparently lied. There you go. It's a lot smoother and a lot more metallic than it would be if the sub was added together. And that is actually happening post. There's a distortion happening on uh, the material, material altogether, which is what this is. If this wasn't on, that's what that would be doing. So that's what that's doing there. Um, I'm doing a little bit of the same thing in that in here. What I've done is, uh, as the peak controller, yeah. So. I'm using the filters quite heavily. I'm using them basically as kind of an equalizer distortion combo because every filter inside Citrus has a filter, but it also has a wave shaper built into it. And um, so this first one is a peak filter, which is kind of just pushing up a particular range of harmonics just to push them there. And to find that, like this right here where it is, is somewhere around like the 500 ish hertz range, like 500, 100, 1000, around 800 kind of thing. That was my first attempt to try and accentuate that range to make it sound like those extra harmonics were there, but I couldn't really do that. So I ended up having to make them myself. And to do this, I used operator five here with some harmonics being FM by operator eight. And like this configuration took kind of a while to figure out. At least in the way, in the way that I actually wanted to do it. Like that sound is what's happening out of here. And you can say that it's not really, it's not really notational. It's just kind of some harmonics moving around, but they are solid and they're moving with the pitch. Also, all of these pretty much have pitch mod on mod X, except for operator four, which is actually noise. So it's not like any pitch whatsoever. I actually could have, if I felt like it, engaged this option over here, where is it, global pitch, where the changes in the pitch of the oper operator one reflect all the pitch changes on all the operators, but um, I didn't do that. Not for nothing, because I'm, I'm doing a little bit of pitch fall on the sub, so they get like a little hit every time it hits. 
Um, so this mess, this this guy is creating the high frequency mess is a saw wave being FM'd by a distorted sine wave up, up at nine, which is not the right, it's not like an entirely correct pitch. However, this is happening at such a short time because of the volume mod I have going on on, on the filter two for it to um, kind of shove in here. And the filter two is a high pass. So this is where the mess goes in here, it gets distorted, comes in here, and it gets high pass. So it's separated from the sub here. And then um, the extra harmonics get added in to filter three. The filter three is a low pass to kind of bring down the, the top end. However, I do a lot more you know surgical changes with the EQ and post because of the post processing that happens out here. Um, now my goal with I asked him doing a little bit of I'm not I thought I was doing some ring modulation. My goal with operator two here was just to make enough noise that like it's just high frequency and, and damaging. Not that not that there's any other particular test I needed to do. However, I just realized I probably would have had a better job if I just used noise. Actually, probably would have been a lot better if I added noise in there and put this, the sub against it, distorted it, high passed it, and then added those extra harmonics in post. Yeah, that would have been a lot simpler than what I've done here. But it was more or less the same point. Make a high-frequency mess, add in the weird mid-range mid rangey harmonic mess, and have it all move down and pitch at the same time with everything else. And the sub was also shutting off after like near the end there, so it gets quieter at the end. It's supposed to be on the whole time. Um, there's also at the the volume mod that's happening on the high frequency material. Not only is it just basically being a pluck, but it's also re like reversing back into itself. Just a little bit slight. I wasn't quite able to get the right sort of transient activity that they got in the original. And I really, uh, it's just a matter of getting the right, um, the right shape of volume going on in there, plus combo combination with the right post uh, distortion and, and compression and that kind of thing. Because I do have compression happening in here, which does kind of screw with the transits that are present. And I could have used um, an envelope controller out here to make volume modding to make it a little bit more, you know, identical. But that's like honestly a lot of work for something that is actually quite simple. Um, the whole separation of the high passing and, and and the sub is not really all that new, and. Um, Music like this that uses this kind of sound design uses utilizes that technique a lot, where you create a high frequency mess that's being modulated by a sub or being modulated around a sub, but it is separated from the sub. That um, especially like like Inside Info and and Matthews and those guys and Emperor as well like like to use those kinds of things. It's an old school DMB trick. Um, and then it's being compressed uh, mostly just to kind of even it out, but also to kind of add some crunch. Yeah, yeah. Just hope you hope you know there's also a kick in here, and also you kind of hear this bubbly thing happening in the end. That's actually a drum loop fading in, just in case you thought that was part of the bass. Cause it's not. Uh, what song was this? This was Emperor and Mephius's Void, um, and this happens at 258. It's like a, it's a transition into one drop, and then that, that sound carries over into the drop. At least a version of it. I don't think it has the higher figure, the the mid frequency content in there. Uh, oh yeah, so um, some of these I'm also utilizing. I have nine voice unison on, but you notice I don't have any pitch or phase settings happening, and that's because I'm utilizing the unison uh, index mapping for some of these guys. And that's then primarily I'm doing it to the pitch of the modulator for the guy that's creating all the noise, just to make it create more noise because different pitches on different volumes together layer. It's almost as if I have three oscillators, four or five oscillators with different pitches all together to just layer together to make more noises. I all the now I'm just doing that on one. And I believe I did the same thing for number five here to make the um, to convolute the image of the high, the, the mid-range frequencies even more. I also changed the phase of some of these guys. That this is the noise oscillator, so the phase of the noise oscillator is different, and also the phase of some of them on number three are different. But notice that they're still kind of close together, and it's because I still wanted the impact. The impact is still there, and then the impact gets convoluted. The phases are all convoluted, so I didn't want to mess with that too much. But yeah, unison phase, unison index mapping is your friend. Although again. As I described it, I'm mostly complicated a much simpler exercise. And that's just because, honestly, I'm kind of tired right now. But that's all right. We did learn some cool ideas in terms of uh, things you can do to stuff if you feel like doing it. And I'm sure it will come in handy later when you do something that actually necessitates such complex action. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> It's worth noting that this particular sound is using envelopes to achieve their hits. Which means it's only ever going to make that 
automation because everything is happening um, according to this rhythm. And I noticed that it was holding over on some notes, and it's because I didn't sustain loop. I didn't end all the loops. I didn't end. That's what happens when you hold a note any longer than that. The only automation is that is that uh, oscillator or modifier X here is just the pitch. Although you really, really even don't even need to do that with that. The only reason why you would use pitch automation versus just changing the pitch of the individual note is that if you want the pitch automation to happen while the note is playing, for it to be a solid line down as opposed to stair stepping its way. So I'll put up uh, the patcher, this patcher for download, so that you can look at it and have a good time with it. If you'd like to make a request to yourself, please do so in the Reddit thread in the description of this video. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.